Church. Thank you for joining us live tonight. We're going to jump into some time of worship acoustically here and uh, just enter into the presence of God tonight. So, Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity we have to worship, and we just uh, give it all to you tonight. God, we just give this all in your holy name. Amen.
message that you're about to hear, this deep dive, really soak in it, and uh, 
take good from it, what you can take notes. And just allow God to speak to you through it. Thank you for joining us. Are you a turkey trotter or a distance runner? Let's pray together. Loving and kind God, thank you so much for this time. Please be with us and teach us everything you want us to have and transform us for eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Several years ago, Nako and I decided that one of the things that we wanted to do on Thanksgiving morning was to run in our local turkey trot. A turkey trot, if you're not familiar with those, is a race, usually 5 to 10K, that people run on Thanksgiving Day. Some of us, and I'm included in that bunch, use it as an excuse to overindulge later on during the day. And you know how excuses are. You convince yourself that something is okay when it's really, really not. And over the years, I've told myself, well, I can have that second piece of pie because after all, I ran the turkey trot this morning. Hebrews 12, 1 reads like this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge cloud of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Are you a distance runner or a turkey trotter? You see, a turkey trotter is only interested, really, in running that day, perhaps, and, and doing it once again to make an excuse for eating more later on in that day. So, really, the exercise versus calories taken in, it's a wash. But a distance runner is a person who knows that he or she needs to be out there every week, putting in the miles, making sure that their distance homework is done. For if you decide not to do that for just a couple of weeks in the row, you will lose ground and have to remake it up when you get back to your training. When you're distance running, you want to make sure that you're not carrying anything extra with you that would make your time slower or make you more weary. Serious distance runners, professionals even, will always be very slim because they know over time that when they carry extra weight down the road, it just compounds itself exponentially on their knees, on their back, and it slows them down. Hebrews says here, let us set aside every weight, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. In other words, the concept here is not one of turkey trotting, running a little bit in the morning so that you can overindulge it in the evening, but rather of being a distance runner and doing a little bit of homework on the road every day and shaping your life in such a way that you can run the distance easier, freer, and unencumbered by the sin that so easily takes us down. If you take a look at your life right now, can you say to yourself that you are practicing the discipline of distance running, or is it possible that you've tried, you've tried to be a turkey trotter for a while? See, the problem with turkey trotting is, if that's all you do, it only happens once a year. And so that three-mile stretch that you run on Thanksgiving morning is certainly not going to make up for everything you eat in the evening. And it certainly won't make up for all that you're consuming later on throughout the year until the next Thanksgiving. After all, Christmas is right around the corner. So what do we say to this then? We are called by the Lord our God 
to have the mindset of a distance runner, as it says in Hebrews 12, 1, to lay aside every weight, especially the sin that so easily entangles us and takes us down. And so what that means is, is that we have to have a mindset of we don't want to take anything with us in this race for Christ that doesn't belong. Turkey trotters occasionally crack open their Bibles, pray when they're in trouble, and make sure that they go to church at least twice a year. Distance runners are looking at their scriptures daily, are praying daily, even when they don't feel like it, and are taking the opportunity to fellowship with other Christians, whether it's in person or through a phone call or through the medium of Zoom or Skype or FaceTime. Distance runners know that they can't run the race themselves, but just like a distance runner needs people at those stations with refreshments, they know that Christians need other Christians to run the race. But they also know that spiritual discipline is important, and that means that they purposely do their way in. They purposely say, what else can I get rid of so that I can run the endurance race with Jesus Christ even better and even faster and cover even more ground? Are you a distance runner or a turkey trotter? You'll find that if you've been a turkey trotting Christian, it will not carry you through this time of the COVID pandemic and the general unrest we find right now in our world. I invite you to give yourself to distance running, to be prepared to daily search out the scriptures, pray to God, and surround yourself with Christian fellowship so that you in turn can be made into the best possible likeness of Jesus Christ that he wants you to be. Secondly, when we look at Hebrews chapter 12, we read verse 2. We do this, that's the running, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Part 2 is this, look as far as you can down the road instead of the weeds growing through the sidewalk. Look as far as you can down the road instead of the weeds growing through the sidewalk. It's easy for me, and perhaps for you, to take my eyes off of Jesus and to start looking at the weeds that are growing through the cracks in the sidewalk. In other words, it's so easy to be distracted by the cares and the burdens of this world and to forget that we are running to Jesus and we are not running for this world or from this world or even to this world, but we're running to Christ. What I mean by that is this. When you're doing your run, you have to remember that if you just kind of look down at your feet, that eventually you'll be exhausted. Pardon me, you'll be exhausted. You won't be able to make it. Because what will happen is, is that your posture will go. Your ability to breathe will not be as strong, and eventually you'll wear out and quit. Are you looking too much at those weeds growing through the cracks of the sidewalk instead of looking way down the road towards Jesus who is waiting for you? When I take my eyes off Jesus, I have found in my life, that's when things go badly. But when I keep my eyes on Christ, that's when things go well. Now, it doesn't mean that my external chance, uh, circumstances rather necessarily change. But what it does mean is that even through the storm, I can still keep my feet going forward if I've got Jesus in my eyes instead of the weeds that are growing through the cracks in the sidewalk. Stop looking at the weeds and look down the road 
Look all the way down the road. And when you focus on Him, you will be given strength to get through even the most trying of times. Because it will be Jesus who pulls you home. And you won't be doing it under your own power. Part 3. Hebrews 12, 3 and 4 reads, Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. Part 3 is this. Turn that whine into a win. Shuffle the letters and add an S. Turn that whine into a win. Shuffle the letters and add an S. You notice that whine is spelled W-H-I-N-E and win is spelled W-I-N. So I want to make kind of a word scramble for us here to remember this point. It's so easy for me to whine, to feel sorry for myself when circumstances are not what I would have, to actually think of myself as more pitiful than I am, especially when things are already pitiful. But I have to tell you what I found over the years is that if I will take the word whine and pull out the H and pull out the E, and then add the letter S to the end. I'll end up with wins, and I can take that H and E and put it before, and I end up with he wins. Turn that whine into he wins by shuffling the letters and adding an S. In other words, perspective is everything. And the writer of Hebrews reminds us, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. Hebrews reminds me that just when I think that I don't want to endure anymore and I start feeling sorry for myself, and engaging in the whining. I do not need to feel that way, and I need to remember instead that I have not yet shed blood, as the old version goes, I have not yet given up my life in my struggle against sin. Now, it says to remember this when we think about Jesus and how he endured all this hostility from sinful people. And then it says we won't be weary and we won't give up. I am so tempted to whine when I don't get my way or when things are going very poorly. But I have to tell you, when I take the H and the E out and add an S, I remember that he wins. And it says in Scripture, at the end of time, Christ Jesus will have the final word. He will have the victory. And all those who have run their race faithfully with him and to him will share in that final victory. You can't see the victory if you're busy whining. But we can all share in the victory when we take out the H and the E, drop the E and add an S, and remember, He wins. This is the message from Hebrews this evening, and it's for you and it's for me. Take heart. You have not yet given up your life in your struggle against sin. God has you. God has us. God's got this, and we have the beautiful privilege of simply following Him. God bless you this evening. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. now receive this benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.